On the globe, there are a huge number of places that tourists should not visit. Envitenit Island is one of them. This place is shrouded in a mystical past. For more than a dozen years, the island has been abandoned. Why no one wants to live on it, we will find out in this issue. On the territory of the Republic of Kenya is Lake Rudolph, teeming with crocodiles. In the central part of the lake, there is a small island called Envitenit. Irrevocable, as its name is translated from the El Molo language, a tribe of local residents who live on the shores of Lake Rudolph. This island is very easy to get to, even on a simple raft. However, for many years, the island of Envitenit has been deserted. It is thoroughly overgrown and the natives bypass it. There are reasons for that. This island has absorbed more than a dozen people. The first gossip about the strangeness of Envitenet appeared in the 30s of the 16th century, when a small El Molo settlement was formed on it. Initially, there were few of them, but then they formed a whole village. The vegetation of the island allowed them to get their own food. Despite the abundance of plant food, no animals took root on the island of Envitenet. Therefore, the islanders had to be vegetarians. The first local residents of the island, Envitenet, said that the stones and plants in their settlement constantly disappeared and then reappeared, but in other places. After the full moon, they often heard a frightening roar from the bowels of the earth, which could go on for hours. People assumed that these sounds were made by the disgruntled spirits of the island. To appease them, the tribe periodically made sacrifices to them. The natives claimed that the island was inhabited by ghosts, humanoid, translucent creatures, after meeting with which an ordinary inhabitant of the tribe experienced temporary paralysis. After meeting with the ghost of the island, the native could lie motionless for days and even die from exhaustion. The researchers, who were the first to visit the island of Envitenet and talked with the natives, had the opinion that the island drives people away from itself in the literal sense, using paranormal powers for this. After each appearance of the above entities, a tragedy happened on the island. The person who encountered them soon received serious injuries, fell ill and died. A little later, on the strange island, according to its indigenous inhabitants, unknown predatory monsters appeared that periodically attacked people. They dragged away children and adults, mainly in the dark, after no one could find these kidnapped people. Even their remains were not found throughout the island. Neighboring tribes living on the shores of Lake Rudolph tried not to visit the island of Envitenet, worrying about their integrity and safety. Soon the inhabitants of the island became completely lonely and forgotten, but they had nowhere to go. After some time, about a couple of years, people from neighboring tribes decided to visit their relatives from Envitenet, whom they had not seen for a long time. Gathering their courage, they organized an expedition to the island. Arriving there, forwarders did not find a single living creature. It was also frightening that household items remained in their places, as if the inhabitants of the Envitenet Island did not go anywhere on purpose. There was a feeling that they were gone for a minute, but never returned. The next who decided to master the mystical island, according to local residents, was a small family hiding from slave traders from Sudan. They tried to hide on the island, but disappeared without a trace. The people who went in search of them disappeared too. Surprisingly, neither the things nor the bodies of the missing were found anywhere. Europeans became interested in Envitenet as early as the 18th century. The Dutch and the Germans sent their expeditions there. Although they were warned by the natives of the danger, not a single expedition returned. In 1935, conducting scientific research, scientists from England, Martin Schefflis and Bill Dyson, landed on the island. Having settled down on the island, they performed the necessary manipulations and every evening, by means of light signals, they made it clear that everything was going according to plan. But after a couple of days, contact with scientists was lost. Local residents were concerned about the condition of the researchers and the availability of food supplies. To 
find out the reasons, a rescue group was assembled and sent, as well as a small plane, which was supposed to inspect the place from a height. Despite a long search, the scientists could not be found. Then, a second group of rescuers was organized, consisting of 200 local residents, which also did not bring any results. A few years after the disappearance of scientists, several families of the Emolo tribe landed on the island. They decided to hide here from their bloodthirsty neighbors from the Samburu tribe. It must be said that people settled down quite tolerably, brought in goats, built huts and fished. Sometimes they sailed to the mainland to visit relatives or to exchange goods. But after a while, the islanders stopped appearing on the shore. Neighbors and relatives sent people to the island. They didn't find a single person. The lifeless village remained untouched. No sign of attack, struggle or hasty evacuation. A small population simply disappeared without a trace. Village huts still stand on the island, but no one is in a hurry to populate them. The feral goats have bred quite well. They roam the island and are not going to disappear. Moreover, no one even hunts there as people are afraid to approach the island once more. People from the El Molo tribe often said that sometimes at night a mysterious dilapidated city appeared on the island in thick fog. It shimmered with different colors, gleamed in the water, grew literally before our eyes. The mystical settlement made strange sounds reminiscent of funeral songs. Those natives who were lucky enough to see a ghost town became ill. They developed severe headaches. They remained in a semi-conscious state for a long time and refused water and food. Locals believe that M. Vitenet is nothing more than the petrified body of the goddess of fertility. Therefore, this land is sacred and nobody can live here. There is also a belief that all of the inhabitants of Rudolph Lake have some kind of curse and the disappearances on the island are just one of the manifestations of this curse. This belief is especially widespread among the El Molo people, who are still on the verge of extinction. There is also a more scientific version. It has long been known that sometimes the lake emits a gas that causes temporary insanity in people. In this state, a person can do anything. Therefore, villagers as well as scientists could simply fall under the influence of this gas and drown themselves, or simply kill each other, or go to the most remote corners of the island. But in this case, the gas would have affected the inhabitants of the coast. But this was not the case. There is also an opinion that the inhabitants of the island simply left it and landed in another part of the lake. But new people didn't appear in any part of the lake. So this version does not look very plausible either. So the mystery of the island of Envitenet is still unsolved. People can only be careful and stay away from the strange island. What do you think it is? Frightening reality or Aboriginal tales? Write in the comments. That's all from me. If you enjoyed it, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. See you again.